You know, the video on the Gigabyte ARS RX 7900 XTX Elite 24 GB that came out two weeks ago? Yeah, that was supposed to be one and done. I don't have the money to benchmark more than this single GPU, and neither do I have the time to do so when I'm already swamped with college assignments. But then, I got this comment. Oh god, why didn't I notice that? So I did some research, and it turns out that games running on the Source Engine kept their frame rates even when VSync is disabled. There are two typical frame caps, 144 FPS and 300 FPS, which is exactly what we saw in the benchmarks last video. As a refresher, these are the 1440p and 4K performance of the ARS Elite on Apex Legends, Titanfall 2, Left 4 Dead 2, and Portal 2. Luckily for us, there is a workaround for most of them. In Steam, right-click on the game of choice, and bring up properties, and in the launch options, enter this string of text. You can replace the number with any other number of choice or the word unlimited. It's just that through testing, frame rates won't reach as high as 1000 FPS in game, and any higher would lead to weird issues with the engine. The game goes ham on the menu and loading screens, letting the GPU pump out frames in the thousands every single second inducing an amazing symphony of coil wine and the occasional PC shutdown. It happened to me twice while testing this. Titanfall 2 requires a bit more finagling as you have to turn off FreeSync in the AMD drivers. Luckily, Adrenaline is really easy to use and after that, you turn VSync on in the game, tricking it to uncap the frame rate. Apex Legends doesn't have a known method of uncapping frame rates. I've looked at several websites, Reddit threads and videos, I've tried all the Steam workarounds, but all the clues point to there being absolutely no way of getting above that 300 FPS. So with that said, let's get on to the benchmarks. Apex Legends remains at a similar performance with a 1440p average of 288.7 FPS. 1% lows are at 178 FPS and 0.1% lows are at 133. 4K fares worse but more toward the values stated in other sources with the average at 222 FPS, 1% lows at 157 FPS, and 0.1% lows at 127 FPS. Titanfall 2 gets a slight bump in frame rate when uncapped. 1440p performance averages at 362 FPS, with 1% lows at 219 FPS and 0.1% lows at 190 FPS. Frame rates for 4K are just slightly lower, dropping 10 to 20 FPS across the board. Left 4 Dead 2 sees a significant boost in frame rates at the cost of more severe lag spikes. In full screen mode, 1440p has an average of 470 FPS, 1% 1 low of 200 FPS, and 0.1% low of 148 FPS. 4K has an average of 349 FPS, 1% 1 low of 166, and 0.1% low of 114 FPS. Windowed mode fares worse with 1440p having an average of 412 FPS, 1% 1 low of 161 FPS, and 0.1% low of 111. While 4K has an average of 292 FPS, 1% low of 148 FPS, and a 0.1% low of 109 FPS. The most extreme change is Portal 2, with a 1440p average of 920 FPS and a 4K average of 522 FPS. 1% and 0.1% lows are far lower at 359 and 313 FPS for 1440p, and 346 and 248 FPS for 4K. We'll now be moving on to price changes in the GPU market over the last month starting from 15th December when the RX 7900 XT and XTX just came onto store shelves. The values are taken from a single large local retailer in Singapore, Bizgram, but other retailers offer prices that are very much similar. They are mostly in the same building. We'll be removing the 8% tax rate and use an exchange rate of $1.33 to $1 US dollar when comparing it to the MSRP. We'll also be rounding off to the nearest $5, just for simplicity's sake. The first week of sales sees very limited SKUs available for purchase, with the XTX reference and AIB models at 25-30% to higher than their MSRPs. The XT reference models also doesn't fare better at 16-18% to above. Late December to early January sees the XTX converge at around $1460 to $1530 US dollars, and the XT at around $1080 US dollars, with reference models no longer being sold by the end of December. From mid-January, Prices have dropped with most XTX models going for 1180 to 1400 US dollars and the XT models going for 1040 US dollars. 
RDX DX, the ARS Elite, and the MSI Mac 2X have become the most expensive models at $1,500 US dollars, and for the XT, the ASUS tax is applied for Tough Gaming, which is going for $1,260 US dollars. On the green team, the 4090 prices have remained stable, from $1,830 for a Gigabyte Windforce to a $2,050 price tag for a MSI Gaming X Trio. The most expensive options are the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme Liquid for $2,550 and the ROG Strix for $2,480. Prices for the 4080 on the lower end have risen and converged around $1,320 to $1,430 US dollars. The Tough Gaming dropped $110 to $1,460 and the Strix dropped $100 to $1,580, but that is only because they released the Strix White for a whopping $1,730 US dollars. The 4070 Ti came out tepid, with prices dropping within launch week. Still, local prices are anything but affordable. The cheapest option, the Zotac Trinity, is at $870 US dollars, while the most expensive option, the MSI Supreme, is at $1,115 US dollars. Early performance benchmarks by others see it competing squarely against the RX 7900 XT, where the difference lies between VRAM capacity and software support. Still, if you only plan to play on 1080p, it would be wiser to not think about upgrading at least until the RTX 4060 is available. In terms of previous generation cards, the RTX 3090 and 3090 Ti has retained its high pricing, if not rising, over the new year. Zotac 3090 and Gigabyte 3090 Ti Gaming OC are at $1,740, and the 3090 Ti Tough Gaming is selling for $1,880. The RTX 3080 were only recently back on shelves, and apart from GPUs with the ASUS tags, are available at around $950, US which is nowhere close to the original $700 MSRP. The 3070 Ti is selling for around $770, US the 3070 at $600, US and the 3060 Ti goes for anywhere between $430 to $575. US the prices for the high-end AMD GPUs like the RX 6950 XT and the RX 6900 XT have plummeted when the 7900 XT and XTX were released, and are now at a much more reasonable, but still expensive, 970 to 1180 US dollars. GPUs lower down the stack stayed extremely stable in price. The RX 6800 is at 695 US dollars, the RX 6750 XT at around 450 to 660 US dollars, and the RX 6700 XT close behind at 420 to 570 US dollars. In the lower end market, where pricing is increasingly sensitive to buyers, there is a large range for the 12GB version of the 3060, which goes for $360 to $470, US dollars, while the 8GB version goes for roughly $315. US dollars. Meanwhile, the range of the 3050s are tighter between $290 to $350. US dollars. The RX 6650 XT is going for $280 to $460, US dollars. the RX 6600 XT for $350 to $440, US dollars. the RX 6600 for $280 to $350, US dollars the RX 6500 XT for $160 to $200, and the RX 6400 for $140 to $180 US dollars. We have a scant few options for GPUs that are older, with a few options for the RTX 2070 and 2060 still going for $480 to $630 US dollars, while the GTX 1660 Ti and Super are at $380 and $480 US dollars. Prices go down a tier with the GTX 1650, 1630, and 1050 Ti in the sub-200 range, and goes down yet another tier with the GT 1030, 730, and 710, which is almost a decade old at this point, in the sub-$100 range. You can observe that while the value of the cards at the lower end of the spectrum are roughly at the prices that you would expect, even in the US, Singapore takes a price premium, a very hefty price premium, for cards in the current and last generation. Regarding the pricing on the RX 7900 XTX, some shops argue that it's to absorb costs from older unsold inventory, but I don't really buy their BS because if they really wanted to do that, they could have just given a single bump and flattened out the prices. However, they rise every few days, especially in the first two weeks. That's basically just shops capitalizing on the newness and the rarity of the cards, and truth be told, that's just a tad bit scummy. Hopefully, over the coming months, AMD and Nvidia would lower prices and things could gradually stabilize to a lower, more reasonable range. But for Singapore, where stocks sitting on shelves are already a sunken cost, prices would probably remain this high for quite a while longer. If you found the information helpful, do give a like and tell me in the comment section below 
how things are like in your part of the world. If you want to subscribe for more of this kind of stuff, don't. Really don't. I don't have much to offer in terms of tech news. If you want some college stuff, feel free to do so. Subscribe, ring that bell, all that YouTube stuff. But if you're not in the market for that, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is it for gaming tech. Nothing more. Iskai benchmarking and tracking prices is hella tiring. May GPUs be affordable again, and maybe, just maybe, I'll catch you guys' faces somewhere sometime soon. That's all for me today. Peace out.